We've been talking about using switches as power sourcing equipment. This is the nicest solution, but there are other options. For example, this PoE injector. This is a separate device that combines the network signal from the switch with power from some other power source. So if you have a switch that doesn't support PoE, this might be a suitable alternative. One common use of this PoE injector would be to power an outdoor wireless access point, which are often too far away from the switch for regular PoE to work. Similar to an injector, you can also get a PoE splitter. This is where you have something providing power but the device doesn't natively support being powered through PoE. For example, a Raspberry Pi. It has a power source that's separate to the network interface. So a PoE splitter will separate the power from the data, allowing you to plug in both cables separately. The advantage to this is that you don't need a wall socket to power all your devices, even if they don't support PoE. But please remember, there isn't a bottomless pit of power available to you. Each switch has a power budget. The power budget is the maximum amount of power that it can supply with PoE. For example, one switch I've used in past is a small 12 port switch and has a power budget of about 100 watts. This means I could enable PoE on only six ports, or I could have PoE plus on up to three ports, or some combination thereof that is less than 100 watts. So keep this in mind when you're buying a new switch. Generally, you can get the switch's data sheet, like the one shown here, from the switch vendor, which gives you this information. I think an interesting takeaway from this is how the power budget is calculated. Let's say you have a desk phone connected to an interface. You enable PoE on the interface, which can supply up to 15.4 watts. However, a simple desk phone is unlikely to draw all 15 watts. It may draw only 5 watts. When calculating your power budget, Work with the amount of power that the interface can supply. What I mean is, assume that the phone will consume all 15.4 watts of power. If you had that switch with a budget of 100 watts, you wouldn't assume that you could run 20 phones at 5 watts each. You need to assume that you can only have 6 phones at 15.4 watts each. This is because each connected device may start drawing more power than you expect up to the limit of that port. Also, when looking at data sheets, they may provide two values. The total power the switch consumes and the PoE budget. For example, a switch may consume up to 830 watts of power. Remember though, that it needs to consume some power itself just to turn on and run. So while it may consume up to 830 watts of power, 720 watts may be for PoE, while 110 watts may be for the switch itself. Some switches allow you to add a second power supply. Depending on the model, adding a second power supply will increase your total power budget. So our 830 watt switch may then consume up to 1550 watts of power. Still 110 watts for the switch itself, but now 1440 watts of PoE budget. I hope that makes sense. And here are the last two quiz questions. I really hope these quizzes have been helpful to you and you've been learning from them. We've reached the end of our section on layer two technology and switching. In the next section, we're going to look at layer three and routing, starting with a basic review on IP addresses and the routing table. Please join me there.